Today's lesson is about the dispatch calendar. Default, you have access to your own calendar. Do the little uh, puppet uh, over here, then go to calendar, and that's where you have your own view. In this case, there's nothing on my view, but that's something that uh, only applies for you. Now, there's also the dispatch calendar. How do you get there? Through this little calendar button over here, and then there's the dispatch calendar. By default, if you open it up, it uh, means that there's nothing in there, so nothing has been configured. I'm going to show you a little bit, a couple of ways on how you can figure it and make a good use of this one. First of all, there says the work groups are over here. Work groups is something that has already been uh, configured, should have been configured. As you can see over here, there's some work groups in this case. We want to use the help desk one. The help desk is a perfect one that you use inside your, uh, your, your audit desk issue in your dispatch calendar so you can see, okay, who has been assigned. Here on top, there's also two buttons where I say show calls with no scheduled resource and show canceled calls. Uh, I usually check those ones too. Canceled calls might be something like a service call that has been canceled that you don't want to see. But right now, as you can see, some more pops up. On this particular service desk user, you see that there's a, a test appointment has already been done. That's a, that's a different color. And there's also a service call when you hover over it. It gives you a little bit more detailed information on which particular client and uh, what kind of info. And there's also the little uh, arrow that you can pull down uh, to open it up or even create more uh, information. Here's now the test ticket. And there's also ways to right click on it. It gives you more options to right away go into the ticket or right away from here enter the time or enter the time for the service call. Remember that uh, when you uh, press right click on it, there's on the service call itself. Then you get a little bit different menu. Here you can also edit the service call. You can view the company. You can forward schedule tickets, but you can also complete the service call. Only do the service call completion once you're done. Once you have entered the time, then you can complete the service call. And by doing uh, the service call completion, that's again also another lesson that it keeps you clean and marks this one as complete. Show you as this one how that will show up. And here you get a green check mark. So that's why it's uh, this dispatch calendar is so great. When you complete the service call from the ticket, it's not really visible from over here. It's much more visible. I can also select maybe other resources in here to give a little bit more, uh, more view. So, uh, let's put Scott Addison in here as well. See if he has something on his calendar. Right now, he doesn't have nothing on his calendar. But as you can see over here, the individual would be the one that we selected over here with no scheduled resource. So if there's a service call that for whatever reason has been scheduled with no resource, you will see it pop up over here and then you can easily move it around. Scott Anderson has nothing on his schedule and Jasper has this one only on his schedule. Now, let's say where we have this one, we're going to edit the service call, revert it back, saying it's not complete. It's basically in new. And I'll press save and close. So we have it still available. Now, if you hover over it, as you can see, it, it gives you the error that you can move it. Now, you can move it to a different date. And you have to wait until Autodesk really uh, gives you the, the, the color coding uh, that it, that it finds the way when it's in that uh, particular day. That can sometimes be a little bit tricky. Uh, see, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. See, we can bring it to another resource. Today for this demo, it doesn't want to work, but in, usually uh, it works. I think at the, it's my screen, uh, the recording is interfering with it. But you can move this uh, service call easily to another day. It will ask you what kind of time you want to have it uh, for. And you can also move it to another uh, another resource. And once it's grayed out, then it also will pop up with the screen if you really want to move it there. Now you have the views also over here for uh, seven days. If you work with maybe the Saturdays and the Sundays, uh, then you can include those ones as well over here. You can also say, hey, plus seven. I want to always move, uh, see seven days in advance. You can also go back in time to change the date. But also one that's very easy to do is to have this view and basically save it as a new view. Let's call this one a view. And because this one is one you want to use, although it remembers this particular setting, uh, if you say, call it dispatch help desk. In this case, you always have that view available. And if uh, Autodesk goes back to uh, the default settings, then over here, you can still always go back and get that settings back up. Now from the view, you can see that over here, the dispatch help desk, I have that one available. You can open up multiple uh, uh, dispatch calendars. Uh, you can press the F5 button. It just should refresh by itself, but 
a lot of people are working in it. You can uh, you can add it and you can refresh it. Uh, you can add multiple, like I said, multiple open. So save your views. Maybe one is for your help desk. Maybe another one is for your other work group. And then save those views and you can have them open. On the bottom, there's also a filter that you can put in over here. And uh, there's options to say, a, put a new filter. And it can give you a list basically of uh, tickets, for example, that have not been scheduled. But that's a good way to work around it as well. As you can see, it brings up a whole list of, of uh, items that you can say. And for example, status that you can select an operator or a, a function to see okay, what, uh, what kind of uh, tickets you want to have there. For example, you can put everything that's waiting customer, a list of tickets that are waiting customer. And once you see those ones all listed here on the bottom, your dispatch person can work from this list, gets the ticket, opens it up, it up, calls the client, client says, yes, okay, I need to work with the technician. Right away in the same view, you have the availability of your resource. Client, do you want to work on Wednesday with this particular uh, resource card? Yes, that's fine. Okay, I have all day available. What works for you? Nine o'clock. Right away, you can put the service call uh, in this calendar from here, uh, once you have the ticket even open from the filter, and you can put it right away here. So this is the your main board of the week uh, to schedule your resources availability. As you can see over here, it has some calculations uh, based on how many uh, hours have been uh, utilized. Eight hours is the available time that's in the system available. 1.75 has been booked for both this appointment and this one. So it always uh, calculates it, and it also calculates back like, okay, how many hours is still available? And what is your utilization? So all small numbers uh, there in there as well to uh, to keep good track on what is uh, what is usable. Of course, you have this one full. It can be a lot of a lot of pages. Uh, it's recommended that if you have a lot of users and a lot of uh, service calls, to split them up maybe in a help desk section or an engineering se section, or uh, so not have all your. Uh, let's say if you have twenty resources, don't put them all in one dispatches uh, workshop because that's going to be uh, too much. So split them up in in groups. I think uh, five or six resources per group is a, is a nice way. I think this is a good introduction to the dispatch calendar. There's some good uh, examples also in the Autodesk help file that, uh, that guide you a little bit more on how to use it. Again, like I said, press F5 if you need to go into uh, a refresh by itself. Uh, here's the dates that you can change a little bit more. Uh, use the saved views. I think that's it. Any more questions, please visit our Facebook group and post a comment over there.